these handies. We see them one more time. Yeah. Cynthia Jones of San Antonio is familiar with the frightening feeling of confronting the unknown. I can't tell you how scary it was. When her daughter Ivy was three months old, the baby started experiencing strange symptoms and a lingering fever. I think one of the most notable symptoms that we knew something was wrong was her eyes, her, her scleras, they weren't white, they were red. That's one of the hallmarks of a rare illness called Kawasaki disease, named for the Japanese doctor who first described it in the 1960s. Kawasaki also produces rashes. The syndrome affects mainly young children, causing inflammation in the walls of medium-sized arteries, putting patients at greater risk of serious heart trouble later in life. Boop. This part you like, right? Dr. Mark Gorelick of Christus Children's Hospital of San Antonio and Baylor College of Medicine found Ivy had severe aneurysms on her coronary arteries. She wasn't responding to conventional therapy. Her diagnosis was delayed after doctors assumed her fever was the result of a routine virus. Dr. Gorelick immediately began treatment. <gasps> Boop. It's a scary time, not only for them, but I think also for us, you know, for the doctor, because some of those patients will then go on to, you know, have lifelong damage, and we don't know exactly who those patients are going to be. So I think it's very likely that there is some infectious spark. Dr. Gorelick isn't just a pediatric rheumatologist, he's a scientific researcher. And when he was looking for somewhere to study Kawasaki disease, Texas Biomedical Research Institute gave his animal model and his experiments a place to call home. Research institutes like the Texas Biomedical Research Institute are one of those places which bring all of those factors together um, and allow somebody to really sort of spark combustion in, in science. You were talking about something very interesting this morning about Koch's postulates and Kawasaki disease. Oh, right. so if you have Dr. Gene Patterson is the scientist who welcomed Dr. Gorelick's Kawasaki project. I just actually approached Gene Patterson out of the blue, and I did not know that Gene is a guardian angel. Most virologists, maybe bacteriologists, have always sort of had a passing interest in it just because nobody knows what causes it. And it seems like by now we should be able to figure it out. It just seems like there's some mystery here that, that keeps it really tantalizing and frustrating. We still don't know at all what causes this disease. So doctors Gorelick and Patterson set out to find funding, which they did, from three different sources. The Velker Fund Young Investigator Award, the William and Ella Owens Medical Research Foundation, and the Vasculitis Foundation. These lab mice are some of the keys to studying how to treat Kawasaki more effectively, modifying how the disease progresses. You know, we started off obviously with just a few to start them up, and, and now we have probably a range of 120 mice. These animals are given an extract of bacteria that causes them to develop the symptoms of Kawasaki disease in about two weeks' time. Gorelick is using new technology to manipulate a gene and look at its impact on one particular protein that may be involved in damage to blood vessels. With the animals, labs, technology, and personnel in place, Dr. Patterson says Texas Biomed is a good fit for a collaboration with Christus. For one thing, we have great veterinarians and great veterinarian care, and he had a mouse model, so it was easy enough for us to take it on. And she likes his scientific angle, dealing with the effects of the disease itself. Uh, Ivy is no longer suffering, and Dr. Gorelick credits her recovery to a therapy crafted from insights made from research. And her grateful mother feels positive that doctors and scientists are working hard to solve part of the Kawasaki mystery. To gain more knowledge on this disease and its etiology, that's, that's amazing for him to do. And she's basically your normal little near one-year-old, right? Yay! And Ivy won't have to be on blood thinners with restricted activity for the rest of her life. This is one of more than 200 research projects going on at the Institute right now. We're Texas Biomed. We're leading the fight against infectious diseases, and we're enhancing lives through discovery. I'm Wendy Rigby.